third and five. They will not go into their goal line defense. Up to the right, A to the left, Allward. Sawback, looking at him, trouble. Now he gets away. Sawback over the five to about the three, and he bobbled the ball, but was he down? He was not. The Cowboys have fumbled. The Giants take over. Well, hello. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. And welcome to the gridiron. And before we get started, just want to say thank you so much to everyone out there who's been watching my videos. Thank you. If you can maybe give this video a thumbs up or possibly leave a comment below, maybe even share this video, it would mean so much to me. Anyway, just thank you so much for just taking time out of your day to check out this video. Thank you. Um, so now, I mean, you know, the, the clock is ticking. Um, you know, we're okay with the um, salary cap right now, but, you know, in about a month from now. <laughs> the New York Giants are on the clock, pick number five. So, we're going to need some little dinero to uh, sign our, uh, you know, draft class, I mean, any other free agents we want to pick up, or, you know, yeah, so, I heard with James Bradbury, because he's like the biggest name going around, right, um, I actually saw, you know, I don't know how true some of these are, you know, I saw a report about the Bills possibly being interested in James Bradbury, you know, I mean, you know, Brandon Bean, Joe Shane, I mean, I was they work together, you know, I mean, so, I'm you know, I'm sure they could work something out between the two if the Bills were interested. That would give the Bills a heck of a second there. Let me tell you, let me tell you freaking what. Um, of course, the, the big ones, I mean, I've seen a lot of reports about the Chiefs being interested in Bradbury. Um, they just saved themselves, uh, you know, they, they then signed Tyreek Hill. He's gone. He's making about $500 trillion a year with the, the Dolphins. I mean, and, and the Dolphins gave him, I mean, the, so the Chiefs got some money. And they got draft picks because the Dolphins, I think, gave him five draft picks for Tyreek Hill. I mean, absolutely unbelievable. Um, I mean, I think he gave him a first round and a second round. There. I mean, if you really know want a wide receiver, I bet, I mean, you, know, you know what kind of wide receivers you can get in the first and second round? You know, and in your first round and your second round combined because the way the Dolphins are picking right, might cost them maybe $5 million. I mean, the, maybe the guys wouldn't be Tyree Kill, all right? I mean, I'll grant that, but you're going to get two really good wide receivers. Now you got two, all right? And it costs you about $5 million. Now you saved yourself, now you got two really good wide receivers for five. So you got two, you save yourself $25 million a year. You know what, you, you, you know, <laughs> $25 million he saves them. I mean, plus there's three other draft picks they gave him Absolutely unbelievable. But anyway, um, so you got the Chiefs. I, I saw a report, or it's maybe the Colts and the Texans, because, I mean, the Texans got, they, they got some picks, you know, as well, too. So, I mean, it seems like there are possibly some teams in the running for James Bradbury. And we still got a month. It's not like, you know, we got two days, we got a week or something like that, you know. Still got a month, and, and, and as I'm going to show you here anyway, we don't even need to get rid of James Bradbury. I mean, you know, I guess we're you know, going to quite possibly come to that, but, you know, we don't need to. You know, what could we possibly do? I mean, if, um, if we wind up keeping Bradbury. All right, so we'll have to wind up waiting and see. So, so, we're, so do they cut him? Do they trade him? You know, Bradbury, you know, how can a Giants uh, create some more cap space for 2022? I mean, obviously, if they just cut them, some team's going to pounce on them and the Giants will get absolutely nothing in return for them. So, I mean, that's why the Giants are trying to hopefully trade them, even at the dish out, maybe a little bit of a salary. You know, I mean, it, you know, that that's one of the, uh, by the sticking points, you know. Well, there's, a, there's the two. I mean, there's teams that are interested. How much money are the Giants willing to pay of a salary? And what are they going to get in return? I mean, the, the team's trying to, you know, uh, well, I'll give you a fifth. And Joe Shane, no, I want at least a fourth. You know, or is, I, I don't know. I mean, is Joe Shane like, nope. 
well, we'll pay half a salary. We need a third. You know what I mean? So I mean, you know, so I'm not exactly sure, you know, where, to, you know, what the sticking points are. Yeah, but when, when the time comes and he is traded, obviously we'll find out what, what everything. But um, you know, you could just, you know, you could, I said, just cut him, trade him. But I said, you're not going to get anything in return. So you're going to have to need save some money to sign some guys, obviously during the regular season as well. Too. I mean, it's just not like you know, um, you just let them go or trade them. You have. Uh, you know, twelve million dollars in space and you know cap space, and now you can sign your rookie class. And okay, you're good. No, I mean you need money going into the season, and it's not so much. I mean, the, I mean the Giants are going to need money going into the season, no doubt about it. It's just, I mean, they would need probably. You would like to have a nice chunk, you know, if possible, if the Giants were contenders. Okay, now they're going to try to compete. I mean, are they, are they going to the Super Bowl? Nope. <laughs> not happening. Uh, are they going to the playoffs? Uh, not with this roster. I, I don't see that happening either. Okay. Um, but, I mean, you know, I mean, if they were, like, possibly on a, you know, maybe a real good chance of winning a division and going maybe deep in the playoffs or something, you'd want some money also on the side, too, in case, you know, somebody, you know, got let go or this or that or, whatever, you know, and you needed some money maybe to sign a couple guys, right? I mean, like, you know, Odell Beckham Jr., right? Not a bad guy to sign on your way to winning the Super Bowl, huh? So, I mean, so you could, one of the biggest things, which is, uh, you know, kind of, you know, it's been kind of the talk, but it doesn't seem like it's going to actually wind up happening, is one is you could wind up trading Saquon. Now, for all intents and purposes, is what I'm, you know, been hearing and reading and watching, you know, YouTube videos and all that, this it's not going to happen, all right? Seems like, uh, you know, uh, you know, he, he's with the Giants for this year. Seems like, okay, you never know. But, I mean, but if they did find someone to trade, right, that would free up $7.2 million. Now, it could be the same thing, too. I mean, you know, it could be, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give them five. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a fourth rounder. you got to pay $2.2 2 of it or something, you know. I mean, there's always those kind of deals going on. But, I mean, I'm saying the Giants, you could straight up just find somebody to take Saquon get maybe a third or a fourth in return, they would save $7.2 million. So, I mean, and, you know, you, they can always draft a running back. Uh, they just brought in two running backs, right? So, I mean, with Breed and Williams, I mean, you know, and then we got uh, Brightwell from last year, too. I said, then you wind up drafting somebody, and there's some nice running backs out there. You know, so if you wind up drafting somebody, you know, you just replay them. No. We replace the person for a person. I mean, it's going to be very difficult to replace Saquon. But, I mean, you know, if you found somebody for him, $7.2 million. Um, we, now, we brought in quite a few wide receivers. I can't say, you know, we, you know, we, you know, we are just st <laughs> stocked and loaded. with. You know, I mean, we got, we got wide receivers. Yes, we do. Okay, I mean, you know. Um, Kadarius Stoney, Galladay, and Shepard. I mean, you know, nice, nice threesome. I'm not saying, you know, <laughs> you know, the greatest threesome in the world, but a nice. But unfortunately, those threesome, they have a tendency of getting hurt. Then the guys behind them, I mean, I mean, is it Darius Slayton, who I'm going to be going over in a minute here? Uh, you know, we got him, and then you know, we got Colin Johnson, and the guys we brought in, you know, some of the guys we wound up signing, and, you know. So, I mean, it, you know. Their bodies, their 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 depth. I mean, are they good quality, solid depth? I'm not going to say that. Okay, you know the you know the the, the bodies. Yeah, their bodies. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you got Kenny Galladay and and uh, Sterling Shepard out, and you got Kadarius Tony, and you're going to have Colin Johnson and somebody else out there. I mean, do you see us? Do you see us going to the Super Bowl? You see it's going to the playoffs? Nope. So, I mean, so we need to add, you know, some quality depth, I, I would think, to the um, to the wide receiver position, you know. So, I mean, you know, if we wind up letting go of Colin Johnson, right? I mean, cause, I mean, I mean, he, he played nice last year. I mean, I'm not going to say, you know, he was unbelievable or anything, but I mean, he was, he was there, <laughs> you know. He, he played when he when asked, you know. Um, but, I mean, you know, not, nothing super spectacular, but, I mean, if we let him go, we'd save $895,000, almost a million. 
I said, but you can draft somebody, you know, and 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 replace them. But I mean, unfortunately, the thing is, who you wind up drafting is going to cost you about the same amount of money as Colin Johnson. But the thing is, is that you know it's going to cost you so much for your draft class, regardless. So by letting go of guys, you know, it minimizes the hit that you take, you know, from the draft class, right? So if we draft an edge rusher, which is quite possible, all right, we could wind up letting go of the X-Man, who Shane Zimmon is, and save around $1 million because he has no ties whatsoever to Shane or Dable or Wink Martindale. You know, I mean, I'm sure Wink, you know, uh, if, if Wink had him in his rookie season, you know, the X-Man had a nice rookie season. No, no doubt about that. The past two years, he's kind of been a little missing in action. So if we would wind up say, uh, letting him go, we'd save about a million dollars. Then, you know, they, if they don't think maybe Nick Gates will be, will be back or, or, or if he's going to, you know, he'll ever be back. You know, once again, they have no ties to him. I mean, you know, they probably know what kind of player he is and they see film on him and all that. But, I mean, he just had a setback with one of the, uh, the rods in his leg, you know. So, I mean... Yeah, they could they could wind up letting him go, all right, and they would save about two million dollars. So if they drafted a center or a guard, you know, because we just brought in a bunch of guys. I mean, uh, um, we brought in a bunch of guys in uh, twenty twenty one as well, too. So, all right, so we brought in a bunch of guys, right? Um, so I mean, so, you know, well, I'm, I'm I'm looking at probably drafting at least I'm thinking at least two, two offensive linemen. All right, so. That might make Nick Gates, uh, you know, expendable. I mean, but I would save around $2 million, right? So I'm saying, so if you let, would let go of the X-Man, uh, Gates, and uh, Colin Johnson, that's about $4 million right there you saved, okay? Now, if we draft that, you know, also, you know, or if we want to keep, want to keep maybe Colin Johnson and we wind up drafting a wide receiver, maybe you can wind up letting go of Darius Slayton. Right? I mean, his past couple of seasons have been a little on the disappointing side, to, you know, to say the least. Right? But if we let him go, we would save about $2.5 million. So if you let go of Gates, um, uh, the X-Man, okay, and Slayton, you'd save yourself about $5.5 million. So if you kept Johnson from some depth and you let go of those other three, there's $5.5 million you, you just save right down there. Okay, now the next month, you know, the next moves uh, involve kind of, which is something Shane does not want to do, kicking the can down the road, which is obviously, you know, saving money today and pushing the money off, you know, it's like putting something on a credit card and just paying the monthly payment on it. You know, you're pushing the bills down the road, right, which is something Shane does not want to do. You know, a lot of it, you know, kind of wants um, maybe just take the hit this year, you know, Financially and, and hopefully, you know, things should, should turn out okay next year. You know, I, I don't want to blame them. You know, take the hit and then really save yourself up, set yourself up for a nice salary cap success in 2023. I mean, if, you know, if, if they were to let go of like um, Dory Jackson next year, Leonard Williams, Kenny Galladay, you know, they could. You know, they'd have close to about a hundred million dollars in in salary cap. Okay, and if they don't re-sign Daniel Jones, they'll have when they they let go of Williams, Adore Jackson, and Galladay, and they don't sign Daniel Jones, they'll have well over they'll have like a hundred twenty million dollars, close to maybe a hundred twenty-five million dollars. So have a lot of money next year. So I mean, if you want to take the hit this year, I mean, it goes both ways. You know, you got a lot of possibly a lot of money next year. Can we kick a little bit of money down, you know, and take a hit for next year? You know, you could, sure you could. Or as I'm saying, you take the hit this one year, and then next year you set yourself up for some success. Now, with uh, you could take James Bradbury, okay, his base salary, all right, and turn that into a signing bonus. Some of that into a signing bonus, right? If you were to take about $10 million, okay, of his $13.4 million base salary, okay, and turn that into a signing bonus, all right, you would save about, possibly about $5 million this year. Because you can, what you can do is, um, it, the, the $10 million now, once it turns into a signing bonus, it's guaranteed. So basically, the guy gets the money, it's guaranteed, he gets the money, 
So that makes him happy. I mean, you know, guys, are, they're happy turning into a sign of ours. But now what it winds up doing, okay, is that because his contract is for this year and for next year, okay, um, they could they could take the ten million and split it into the two years, right? So you take five, you know, five million for this year and five million for next year. So this year you'd be saving about five million dollars on his salary. So you you would still have still have the services of James Bradbury. And you'd be saving about $5 million. Now, that wouldn't get totally get the job done, but that's $5 million. Also, another thing I, I was seeing that you can do is a thing they call avoidable year. Now, basically, avoidable year is a year, uh, uh, a contract, like writing them a contract for 2024, which is going to be voided. But you can push money into that year as well, too. So if you wanted to... Um, you can turn his $10 million sign-in bonus into three years, into 2022, 23, and 24, which would become a voidable year. So basically, it would be about $3.3 million this year, $3.3 next year, and $3.3 million avoidable year in 2024. So you'd wind up saving, if you did that, you'd, instead of saving $5 million, you can be saving about $6.6 million, which is even better. The problem is now is that now you're kicking money two years down the road instead of just maybe into next year. You sign, you know, you, you push your money uh, down two years into the so. You know, same thing you can wind up doing. You know, if uh, if you wanted to do, do anything with like Leonard Williams, all right, you could you could take some of his same thing pretty much and, and about ten million of his nineteen million dollar, right. Into a, into a signing bonus. About the same thing you can do. All right? So once again, he gets the money up front, so he's happy. Here's your $10 million. Oh, thank you very much. All right? Um, Giants spaced it out, okay, over two years, and they'll save about $5 million. So that, that, you know, they can put $5 million here in 2022, $5 million in 2023. So they'll wind up, they can save about $5 million. So they did that with Brad Barry and Leonard Williams. Now they're saving $10 million. Now they got Leonard Williams this year, and they got Brad, James Bradbury next uh, this year as well too. They got both guys, and now they're saving ten million dollars, right? So instead of getting rid of Bradbury and saving twelve, now this is something like this: you can keep Bradbury, and you'd be saving like ten million dollars. Then it's the same kind of thing with um, Leonard Williams. If you did some type of a, a avoidable year in twenty twenty four. You can kind of do the same thing. You can uh, take of a sign-in bonus. You can do three point three million for this year, three point three million for twenty twenty-three, and three point three million dollars uh, an avoidable year of twenty twenty-four. So now you'd be saving even more money. So if you did that, you'd be saving, you know, with Bradbury. If you did that with Bradbury and with Leonard Williams, you're saving like six point six and six point six. Now you're saving thirteen point two million dollars between the two. You still got the services of both guys. You just saved thirteen point two million. Now you can sign your draft class with just two guys. But you're pushing with both guys. You're pushing money further down the road, which is why Shane does not want to want to do. All right. Same thing with the Dory Jackson. All right. Now his base salary is ten million. Okay. So you can't. So you can't do the whole thing. I think he's. I think it regard. I think it's. I think regardless, he has to be, his salary is like a million dollars. So you can't turn the whole thing into a sign-in bonus, I believe. So out of his 10 million, you can turn about 9 million of it into a uh, sign-in bonus, okay? And you could split it into two years, or you can do the same thing. You can put it into three years. So you could, you know, if you want to do it into two, you, you uh, 4.5 million this year, 4.5 million next year. That way you'd be signing, you're saving 4.5. Or if you want to do another voidable year, be kicking some more money down the road, you can save even more money, right? So I mean, yeah, I mean, if you did that with all three of the guys, you'd be saving fifteen to twenty million dollars with a voidable year, right? And that would you have the services of all three guys, you'd be able to sign your draft class, and you have a few more million dollars left over, which is huge. Except you know, as I said, you know, the, he's kicking money down the road, which is something he doesn't want. As I said, I don't really blame him, you know. Uh, now, the thing is, is that, you know, you can really take the hit this year, financially-wise, I said, because in 2023, if they would cut Leonard Williams, just let him go, right, his salary's uh, $26.3 million. If they don't do anything at all, no voidable years, no signing bonuses or nothing, his salary's 26.3. They let him go with an $8.3 million cap hit. 
they'd be saving 18 million dollars next year if they just let him go. All right, 18 million. Kenny Galladay. All right, now what I was saying. All right, his salary is 21.4. His dead cap hit would be 14.7. So that that's you know that's a decent amount. So, I mean, if they let them go, they'd be saving six point seven million, right? Do the same thing with the Dory Jackson next year too. His salary is sixteen point five. The dead cap hit would be four point five. Let him go, you save yourself twelve million dollars. You let those three guys go, you're freeing up about thirty seven million dollars. That's a nice chunk of change, right? They could also wind up trading back in the draft. Pick number five, okay, is worth about six million dollars. I think it's like six point one or something like that. Pick number seven is worth over five. It's like five point seven or somewhere around there. I, I I didn't look up the exact total, but between the two, pick five and pick seven, you know, you're looking at you know eleven to twelve million dollars, almost twelve million dollars for the two guys. Okay, you know, if you could find if you could find a trade partner, all right. Trade back into the first round, or trade, or, or in that you know, or as I said, get maybe get a, a first round pick for next year. Maybe if if somebody trades up with you and you get their first round and you get maybe a second round, well maybe take their second round from this year, you know, and then you can get their second round maybe from uh, get their first rounder on next year's draft. That way you're freeing yourself up, you know, from pick number seven. Right, so pick number seven, who might cost you like five point seven million this year. You're not worried about that because you, you, you have the person set the, the other team's second round pick. So you have to sign their second round pick, which is going to be a lot cheaper than five point seven. So you'd be saving yourself probably about four million dollars right there. You know, or or if you could just move back in, in the first round, like if you traded with the Saints at number eighteen, you'd be going from like five point seven to probably like maybe three million dollars or so. so. You might save a couple million by going from seven to, to eighteen. All right. So, I mean, there's all, ways that kind of, all kinds of ways to do it. You know, I mean, there's, there's, I'm reading up on this stuff, and I'm just, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, all these things that are, that, are, uh, that are out there. But, I mean, there's all kinds of ways without, um, you know, well, saving money, you know, with, without quite. It's going to get done. It's just a question of, you know, how is it going to get done, you know. Um, but it, just to go to show you, okay, it, it, we don't have to. To get rid of James Bradbury, all right. If 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 you know things don't fall our way, you know, with, with the trade and all that stuff, we don't have to get rid of James Bradbury to get enough money to sign our draft picks. Well, as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time any day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there and go Giants. Woo!